Hello everyone and welcome to Oak Ridge Presbyterian's online self-isolation service. We are so glad you could join us today. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Hear the call from God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we are pleased to have Wilma Boyce, our pastoral care and adult ministries coordinator, as our preacher. Next week, I will be away on a week of holidays. Next Sunday, June the 7th, Wilma Boyce and Reverend Hugh Appel will be conducting worship together. I will return the following Sunday, June 14th, and lead you in worship, followed by Jackie and I leading in the celebration of Holy Communion. The following information is also found in this week's newsletter sent out last Friday. The OPC Reopening Task Force is in the process of developing all the protocols necessary for a safe return to worship in the church. Many aspects of Sunday worship as we knew it will have to be changed for as long as COVID-19 remains a threat. What follows is just a partial list. We're going to have disinfection protocols the role of ushers and greeters, safe seating numbers, collection, communion, requirements of PPE for attendees. The local health units across the province are increasingly recommending that people wear masks when around others, particularly when social distancing is more difficult. If you haven't done so already, we recommend obtaining a mask by buying disposable ones or wearing a homemade one. We know of some congregants of OPC who are making effective face masks out of cloth. During this COVID-19 crisis, our mission and outreach team has been monitoring the needs of the London community. The London Food Bank is in special need of baby supplies, that is diapers, baby formula. We also, they also need canned meat and fish and other groceries and cash to purchase items which are so desperately needed. Please bring your donations to the northwest corner of the food bank building between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. at 926 Leithorn Street in London. And their phone number is 519-659-4045. We've also been a longtime supporter of mission services. In order to enable social distancing, some of the men have been moved from the men's mission to hotels and motels. This has also been the case with Rotholm Family Shelter. Because of this, extra staff have been hired to provide supervision, cleaning, and cooking needs. A special COVID-19 account has been established at Mission Services to pay for PPE gear and the extra staffing needed. Please send donations to Mission Services and their address is 4-797 York Street here in London. And their phone number, 519-433. 2807 and thank you for supporting these needed charities. This past Friday I received an email from the Mayor's Office of the City of London that for those who are interested tonight from 730 to 830 that is May 31st there is an online interfaith event called quote many faiths one voice interfaith prayer for the forest city. You can search for the title of the event and then you should be able to find the YouTube link. Now please join us in our opening praise song, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Then we will hear from our children's ministry leader and coordinator, Sonia Brule, who's going to tell us what's happening in kids' ministry this week.
week in Kidsmen, we are digging into the armor of God. And we're going to learn how we battle conflict with our shoes of peace. So check out our Kidsmen video on our YouTube channel. Now feel free to join us in our next hymn, Holy Spirit, You Are Welcomed Here.
It's now time for our responsive call to worship. Breathe upon us, Holy Spirit. So that our thoughts are inspired by you. Act in us, Holy Spirit. So that our actions bring healing to the world. Stir in our hearts, Holy Spirit. So that our love spreads joy in broken places. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit. So that our service provides hope to despairing people. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit. So that our lives witness to God's coming reign. Amen. Amen. It's now time for a prayer of adoration and confession. Shall we pray together? Loving God, compassionate Son, healing Spirit, with tender kindness, you transform our lives with your presence. You turn weeping into laughter, sorrow into joy, and death into life. We come in adoration this day and pause to worship you. We rest from our work and our responsibilities. We set aside our distractions and activities to praise you for the beauty that fills your world and to enjoy our life in you. Holy One, source of our lives, we confess that we have not always listened for your Spirit's call. You call us to love our enemies 
but we cling to animosity old and new. You call us to unity in the body of Christ, but we remain divided. You send us into the world to be witnesses, but we avoid opportunities to share our joy in Christ. Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Hear us as we share with you the secrets of our hearts in this silent prayer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's now time for the Declaration of Forgiveness. Jesus Christ came to save and redeem us. In Christ, we find the peace of forgiveness. In Him, our sins are forgiven. We are free to live life anew in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join us now in singing, Come, O Spirit, with your sound, and it's taken from our hymn book, number 276, verses 1 through 3. Join me now in the prayer for illumination. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, O God. Break down our defenses and change our hearts so that we may fully accept and follow the mission you lay out for your church, yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today will be from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. Please join me. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rushing of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, they, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own la native language? Parthians, 
Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Hello, my name is Pastor Wilma, and today I will be giving the message. Today is Pentecost. The birth of the church is the day that we celebrate today. Let's come to God in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There is an explanation in the first book of the story of the people of God in Genesis of how people came to have many different languages. After the flood, when the earth was being repopulated by the descendants of Noah, we're told all the people spoke one language. And they say, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. They became so proud of their accomplishments that they believed they can be like God. So the Lord sets them straight on who it is that gives them the ability to communicate in the first place. The Lord confuses their language so they do not understand one another and they are scattered over the face of the earth. The many languages result from people wanting to honor themselves more than they honor the Lord. This struggle to communicate is an age-old problem. Right up to this day, language barriers, cultural barriers, and other kinds of barriers prevent people from understanding each other. But wait. Jesus said, says to his disciples in chapter 1 of Acts, Wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. They asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set, set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he ordered the disciples not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. The disciples didn't really understand what this meant, and they weren't the best at waiting, but they went to Jerusalem, and they waited, and they waited, and they waited. They did not know what to expect. How could they have known that when the Holy Spirit came, God would reverse 
the confusion of languages, and give instead the ability to understand for many, many people. 3,000 in one day. The day of Pentecost. Almost like one giant flash mob, only much, much better, because God is the orchestrator. Everything just falls into place like a well-rehearsed symphony, beautifully orchestrated. This is the picture the Gospel writer paints for us. It's about God's deeds of power. That same Gospel writer who recorded the story of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke from his birth also records the story of the church in Acts from its birth. In the Gospel of Luke, the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, tells of an amazing celebration involving heaven and earth, angels and shepherds, as everything comes together in God's perfect timing. Then in Acts, we have the birth of the church through the coming of the Holy Spirit, God with us. And it tells us of an incredible celebration drawing together heaven and earth, tongues like fire, setting tongues on fire. Carefully plan to the minutest detail. See how the events of Pentecost unfold. Penta is Greek for 50. And we celebrate Pentecost 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And it happens to coincide with the Feast of the Weeks of the Jewish people that fell on the 50th day after the Passover, seven weeks plus a day. This is important because at that time, every male Jew living within 20 miles of Jerusalem was legally bound to come to celebrate, to commemorate the giving of the law to Moses, to offer two barley loaves in gratitude for the harvest gathered. There was to be no one working on that holiday. And so the crowds on the streets of Jerusalem would be greater than ever. Devout Jews from every nation were in Jerusalem. The history of God's people and current affairs come together. The new builds on the old. God's timing is perfect. The disciples were all together in one place, no one off doing their own thing. Suddenly, they heard an incredible noise from heaven. It sounded like a windstorm, a hurricane, a tornado, a violent wind, the sound of some tremendous force. And though it filled the house they were in, nothing was moved. No buildings destroyed, no doors slammed shut, not even a rustling of anything is mentioned. And we read they were sitting there and then divided tongues as a fire appeared on them. And a tongue rested on each one of them, a visible sign from God. So they have the incredibly frightening sound perhaps to show them it's power that comes from God. And then a visible sign. And I'm reminded of Philip saying these words to Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Show us the Father, then we will believe. Perhaps here God is being compassionate of their humanness and their need for visible proof and shows them the Holy Spirit in the guise of what appears to be a flame, a tongue as it were, a fire, and one tongue rests on each of them. A baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth. This was what Jesus had promised would come. Could you imagine how this would have looked? Would they be standing up now? Did it all happen in an instant, the twinkling of an eye, heaven breaking in on earth? They heard the violent wind and saw the tongues as if it was fire, but the power of the Holy Spirit was unleashed inside of them. 
They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and the first thing they were able to do with this power is communicate with all the devout Jews from every nation under heaven who were in the city to worship and bring offerings to God. With tongues on fire being filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. As is typical with most communities, the crowd gathers to see what the sound is all about. They were bewildered, amazed, astonished. They saw these Galileans and what was coming out of their mouths didn't match their perception of who those Galileans were. They were disciples, fishermen, with no formal education, yet they were communicating in such a way that these Parthians, these Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, visitors from Rome, Cretans and Arabs, all understood what they were speaking about God's deeds of power. William Barclay explains it this way. What happened was for that for the first time in their lives, this motley mob of nations gathered in Jerusalem was hearing the word of God in a way that struck straight home to their hearts and that they could understand. The power of the Spirit was such that it had given these same disciples, these Galileans, a message that could reach every heart. There was an understanding when they heard them speak about God's deeds of power. Wow, this is incredible, unbelievable. What does this mean, they asked. What happened at Pentecost, we really do not know, except that the disciples had an experience of the power of the Spirit flooding their beings such that they never had before. And the day the church was born, it numbered 3,000. It seems there is always someone ready to snuff out the flame, to kill the wonder and mystery of what God is doing. And this time was no different. Others sneered and said they were drunk. But Peter, Peter steps up to the plate. Peter, who ran away in fear when challenged only 50 days earlier. Peter, who had responded in violence and anger when Jesus was arrested. He rises to the challenge now in a peaceful way, using scripture to give credibility to his message. Peter was guided by the Spirit as he preached the first sermon of the church that morning. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit." Peter's tongue was on fire, speaking of God's deeds of power, as were the other disciples, not seeking to make a name for themselves, but using the power of the Holy Spirit to speak the truth that it is God who builds the church, who adds numbers. From this time forward, the disciples used the power of the Holy Spirit to love the unlovable or the one who caused them pain, used the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive or to let go of controlling the outcome and use the power of the Holy Spirit to heal brokenness, to give the glory to God instead of accepting praise for themselves. Use the power of the Holy Spirit to call on the name of the Lord instead of relying on their own resources 
and use the power of the Holy Spirit to be humble. Today we celebrate that day, Pentecost, when heaven broke in and changed the course of events, not just for Israel, like the disciples thought, but for the whole world. God's vision is much bigger than the disciples imagined, bigger than what we imagined, bigger than a city or a country, bigger than a particular ministry, church, or denomination. This is the story of the birth of the church, the body of Christ. And this celebration of Pentecost is one of the most important events of the church, right up there with Christmas and Easter. It is important because it takes the Holy Spirit working in us to be part of God's mission, a part of the building of the kingdom of heaven on earth. It is the continuation of God with us. The Holy Spirit was manifested in a special way at the birth of the church. These days we don't hear at least, I don't think I have heard the violent sound of wind in the way the disciples heard it, or see tongues that look like flames resting on us when the Holy Spirit comes. But it does come to lead, to guide, to comfort, to strengthen, to encourage us. Perhaps it is when a scripture verse suddenly comes to mind when we're talking to someone, someone who may have questions about God, someone who may be seeking God. Perhaps when we tell God we desperately need his strength to get through a time of life, a situation, or to help us forgive someone, to turn the other cheek. And suddenly a peace comes over us or we are able to speak a healing word instead of a hurting word. We are able to forgive the unforgivable or love the way Jesus said to love. These are manifestations of the Holy Spirit, and we too are given tongues on fire when we speak about God's deeds of power. And the greatest deed of all, the forgiveness of sins through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ to restore us to relationship with God. I couldn't help but think of the year of Jubilee because it carries with it the number 50 also. The 50th year when freedom is given, debts forgiven, and the mercies of God manifested, just like that first Pentecost. Today we have generations and nations and all kinds of people we know who need to hear the good news. It may be that a language is a barrier to understanding. It may be a culture that is a barrier that needs to be understood. Or it may be something else. Let us rise to the challenge. Don't let the ones who sneer douse the flame that God gives us. Jesus said, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. All glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
It is now time for our offertory prayer. Shall we pray? Spirit of grace and power, bless the gifts we bring today so that they accomplish surprising things in Jesus' name. We offer ourselves too so that our lives may proclaim the good news with your grace and power. Amen. It's now time for the prayers of the people and we have a few prayer requests I want to share with you. First of all, uh, one of our members, Jenny Wong, who we've been praying for, is not doing well and we want to pray for continued healing in her life and pray for her family as well. We also want to pray for my mother, Marie Hoekstra, who is palliative, but she is back in her long-term facility and the family is able to visit her and we thank God for that. We want to lift up Reed and Diane Hackwell as well, as Reed has lost his brother Dave this past week. We want to pray for comfort and peace at this time of loss. Shall we come to our Lord of Prayer? Wind of the Spirit, blow through us on this day of Pentecost and renew our faith. Reawaken our love for God. Let your flames warm our heart and trust in Jesus Christ, and dare us to do great things in his name. Dear God, wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us energy to serve you in Christ's church. Open our eyes to recognize needs for ministry and mission, and to learn from this time when we have had to do things differently in worship and pastoral care. Open our hearts, Lord, to connect with those for whom the time of social distancing has been very difficult. Open our hands to share in the tasks that need doing and open our lips in praise and prayer. Wind of the Spirit blow through us and give us understanding for those whose lives seem so different from ours and those facing situations because of the pandemic that we didn't encounter ourselves. Understanding for those with whom we've disagreed and for problems and challenges we will now face at home, at work, and in your world as we try to recover from the effects of the coronavirus. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring healing to those who are ill. Lord, we pray for Jenny Wong and Marie Hoekstra. We lift them up to you. We pray for those who face pain and illness, discouragement or disappointment, made so much more intense because of isolation. We pray for healing for all who know sorrow, sadness or grief. We lift up to you, Lord, in prayer, Diane and Reed Hackwell, and uh, we pray for them, Lord, as they mourn. Give them the peace that surpasses all understanding and the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for those, Lord, who face stress and pressure as they try to rebuild their lives. Bring healing to the earth, to places of upheaval, and to ecosystems that are at risk. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring us the compassion we see in Jesus. Blow through us and refresh us as your faithful followers equipped to serve the world you love in his name. As together we say the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And please join us in singing Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Mr. 
time for us to celebrate birthdays and we do this on quite a regular basis here in worship and we have two birthdays to mention specifically this week one is Will Edgar's whose birthday was on May the 29th and the other is Jim Perry whose birthday is on June 6th and we will sing now happy birthday for them but for others too that I haven't mentioned who had a birthday around this time God bless you as we sing together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everyone. We will now say the peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord and go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship and the joy and the love of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always, this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore. Amen.